Hello, everyone. Before we begin, if you can all please confirm that you can hear me and see the slides clearly by just typing yes in the chat window. Also, please feel free to introduce yourself, your name, your position in the company, and which country you are based in. It is great to see an international audience of people from all industries and backgrounds. Nice to meet you all. Okay, great. Thanks for confirming. I welcome you all on today's webinar on implementation of bow tie analysis for major process hazard prevention. My name is Khadij Begum and I am working as a technical support at Velocity. For the next two hours, it will be our pleasure to host this webinar for you. This is our 63rd webinar in series of technical webinars we are conducting. As a practice, we are conducting one webinar every second Sunday. You can follow us on LinkedIn and make sure to check our website to stay tuned to the latest updates. So today we have a quite an experienced panel of speakers, Mr. Ijazul Karim Rao, who is the Managing Director, Principal Integrity and Safety Consultant at Velocity. The second is Anthony James Williams, who is the Global Sales General Manager, and Himan Dinant Badri, who is the Principal Process Safety Engineer, and Ms. Sayeda Samia West, who is the Lead Software Engineer. During this webinar, we encourage you all to keep asking questions to clear any doubts. This can not only help you, but also help many others who can usually have the same doubts. You can type your queries in the Q&A window, and you will either receive a reply in the window or live. We'll try to answer questions as much as we can during the session. Also, we'll have a detailed Q&A session after the completion of the topic. Please accept our apologies if your question is not addressed due to high volume of questions we usually receive. And given the limited time, we must be selective. We would like all of you to engage in the topic. We will also be issuing participation certificate to all those who have attended at least 80% of the webinar and have participated in the discussion through Q&A. Okay. Before we begin, although most of us are in the comfort of our homes, we should be aware of emergency exists due to the current COVID-19 situation and its emerging variants. We should be more careful, keep a safe distance and in general, take care of ourselves and those around us. So this is quite a technical subject today. We will be touching few theoretical and practical aspects of implementation of bow tie analysis for major process hazard prevention. In this limited time of two hours, we request you all to follow along with us, keep asking questions to help us in making this as engaging as possible. So in today's webinar, we will involve a practical case study. Please note that the client name and the data have been redacted. We will be following a practical approach where we will walk you through the key steps through this case study. Good day and assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, it's nice meeting you all again. And uh, I know uh, people are sitting in different time zones from Far East to Middle East and then to Europe. Uh, today's topic, uh, mainly uh, we are trying to cover bow tie, which is a part of uh, coma. And coma is control of uh, major accidental hazards. And uh, we are taking reference of Adenoc uh, because in Adenoc we are providing uh, services to Adenoc group of companies. And uh, the system is well defined uh, within Adenoc. And other companies may also take reference uh, from the Adenoc uh, prevailing practices. And Adenoc Adenoc has taken a reference from HEC Executive UK. So if all of you, I think the people who are uh, from HEC background, they would know there are two regimes or two uh, like uh, standards which are known worldwide when it comes to management of HSC or PSM, Process Safety Management. One is OSHA, which is from America, and the other one is HEC Executive UK. And uh, since uh, uh, UAE, uh, the, the basic uh, fundamental infrastructure was built by BP, British Petroleum, back in the 60s. So same uh, like uh, culture is taking forward. And now uh, there is some uh, like uh, merger within HEC Executive UK and uh, OSHA, but the, still the prevailing standards uh, which are being followed here are HEC Executive UK. Uh, this is the like uh, one standard uh, which is uh, like uh, control of major accidental hazards, comma. And uh, if I just try to show you, so this standard was like uh, the second version was issued in 2019. And there was also previously COPs were there, which were prevailing within Adno Group since 1990s. And under this standard, if you say the index point of view, uh, comma process, comma is control of major accidental hazards. Then comma features and control. Uh, when is a comma report required? Then there's a description information point of view, then accidental scenarios, then management uh, major systems. Then there is a emergency response plan. Then uh, basically under comma, if we uh, try to see as a normal process, like uh, if I try to uh, outline, 
the comma is a safety part of the safety management part of any project or any facility. It starts with hazards uh, workshop where we try to identify all hazards. And then the second stage is building of bow tie. A bow tie is where we try to show all hazards or threats, their consequences, uh, their preventive measures, consequences, uh, sorry, uh, pre uh, mitigation, mitigative measures or escalating, uh, escalating factors uh, in a diagram, in a graphical way. Uh, that is a bow tie. And then we do QRA, which is quantitative risk assessment or qualitative risk assessment, depending on type of the hazard. And then uh, there is a HSCMS program. And then there is identification of HSCCS or safety critical elements. And then there are performance standards. And lastly, is the uh, return scheme of examination, which is applied at a project phase point of view. So this, this standard, along with ST29, uh, makes the complete family, right? And uh, here, so I go next stage. <clears throat> this is the objective of this standard is to define the approach uh, to the control of major accidental hazard for uh, all major hazard sites in Adenoc group. This standard is applicable for the Adenoc site. And uh, the, the definition of major hazard is like a, a very incident which may cause uh, one or more fatality is called a major accidental hazard, or it also covers the supporting systems which may help to prevent an accident. Those are also the, uh, part of this uh, like a comma or HCCS group discussion. A major accidental hazard is the in the design. Basically, uh, what we try to see, uh, the major accidental hazards for any particular facility, which can be controlled or managed at design stage. And then there are certain issues which may come up during construction, commissioning, or operation phases. So those all accidental hazards are basically defined and they are studied. And it is made sure uh, they are as low as reasonably practicable in a large region. This includes hazard with major, major accidental potential, which may be introduced within the major hazard site boundary, for example, from marine, basically first should be from the process itself, then from the marine side, from the road transport, from helicopter operations, off-site or third parties, uh, contribution as well. On the normal abbreviation, so as uh, the, the terminology which is being used, one is BRA, which is called building risk assessment, then comma, which I defined earlier, control of major accidental hazard, then ERA, ERA is escape, evacuation, and rescue assessment, then EIA, environmental impact assessment, then INVID, environmental impact identification, ERP is emergency response plan, Feed is front end engineering design. FERA is fire and explosion risk assessment. Hazard is the hazard identification. HAZOP is normal hazard and probability analysis. HSC means health, safety, and environment. HSC CA means HSC critical activities. HSC CS is health, safety, environmental, critical equipment and system. HSC IA is health, safety, environmental impact assessment. MAH is major accidental hazards. O it is occupational health identification, then QR is quantitative risk assessment, C is safety integrity level. So now with some definitions, alarm mean as low as reasonably practicable, mean to, like uh, when we identify hazards and we see their preventive situations or their consequences and the mitigative layers, and we see that what is the level of the risk, if that is within acceptable range or it can be like uh, tolerated, it cannot be tolerated. So that is as low as reasonably, reasonably practicable. We know that in hydrocarbons and oil and gas circuit a system, nothing is without risk. Certain risk will always be there. We know that hydrocarbon can burn itself. There is a oxygen in the air. Only one thing is missing, that is the third angle, which is ignition source. It means if ignition source comes, then hydrocarbon facility can go into ignition and there's a bigger disaster. So means the risks are there, but how we try to manage it, like a better or good inherent safe design, then uh, like ignition prevention of all ignition sources, and then try to operate the plant with having a detective, fire and gas detection system, fire fighting system. Then we have a trained operating, like staff with operating procedure and manuals, 
inspection programs, maintenance programs, and those all things helps us to keep the system in the uh, alarm region. Alarm region mean in the as low as reasonably practicable. Bowtie, bowtie is a di basically bowtie diagram provides a visual representation of all credible accidental uh, scenarios that could exist around a certain hazard. Bowtie diagram links threats and consequences to an event which is controlled by various preventive, uh, mitigative, and recovery measures or barriers. And then building risk assessment, it is a basically, uh, it measures the risk to people in occupied buildings in a process plant. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, right. Uh, and identify any improvements that are required to ensure that they are adequately safeguarded. Building like QRA is a quantitative risk assessment of the plant, but there are buildings, admin buildings, surrounding buildings where people would be there and it is assessed that if there's any particular risk to those people as well. Drop object study, uh, this is required generally for the facilities. For example, uh, it's also called mechanical handling studies, like uh, if any equipment is required to be moved away from the facility for repair or maintenance or for installation or replacement, in that scenario, there could be a requirement of a, a crane or a, like there could be a lifting uh, some process. And in that scenario, things may drop. Uh, in uh, drilling uh, rigs, uh, there are a lot of vibration. And uh, due to those vibrations, sometimes lights, other loose end parts may drop on the people, uh, which may cause certain uh, like injury. So the drop object study is required so as all the loose ends are properly tied up. Environmental impact assessment means a systematic process of evaluating the environmental impacts of an activity or a project or a process on the environment. Emergency response plan is like a fifth layer of any part of system. For example, the first layer of prevention is prevention, then detection, third one control, fourth one mitigation in fire fighting system or fire and gas detection system, and fifth one is emergency response plan or a scenario when things becomes uncontrollable, so how to rescue or how to escape from the facility. Hazard is an unbasically desirable uh, situation which may cause the may cause harm to uh, asset, people, or to the environment. Hazard and probability is uh, like uh, the correlation. Uh, when we are operating the facility, there would be certain hazards or certain deviations, and uh, for those deviations, we need to assess whether we are within acceptable range or not. HSC critical activities mean activities that have been identified by hazards and effect uh, management process as a vital to ensure asset integrity, uh, then prevent accidents and or to mitigate advice, uh, adverse HSC effects. HSC, uh, then there is a critical equipment and system. So these are basically the system which are identified by Bowtie, like uh, if any uh, system or equipment which uh, may contribute towards any major accidental hazard or may help in prevention of major accidental hazard are called HACCS uh, equipment or systems. And uh, those are like related to MAH mean uh, one or more fatality might be caused or might be prevented. Then health, safety, and environmental impact assessment. It is a systematic process where we try to assess all three, health under aura, safety under coma and environmental under EIA. So these are the three uh, basically uh, studies which are done as a part of, we call it HSCIA assessment. Then major accident, like a definition point of view, a major accident to mean uh, an occurrence such as emission, fire or explosion resulting from uncontrolled uh, developments in the course of uh, pro uh, operation leading to a major catastrophic or disastrous consequences irrespective of their likelihood and serious consequences assigned with risk rank uh, affecting people, asset, the environment, or the company reputation. Then quantitative assessment is a, a way where we try to quantify the uh, likelihood and consequences, and then to see the effects of that particular hazard is how uh, big or small. Then safety degree level, this is basically uh, one technique which is used as per IEC 61508 or IEC 61511. Uh, this technique is applied on 
uh, basically SIFs. SIFs are called safety instrument functions or ESD system or fire and gas detection system. Uh, these systems are installed for the safe shutdown of the facilities or to take the facility to the, to the safe condition in case any abnormality is uh, pointed out. And uh, to see the reliability, like what level of reliability is required for that particular SIF, uh, we try to assess the SIL process and the SIL safety integrity level and the relevant code for the SIL is IEC 61511 and 61508. So now we'll check a little bit on ST29. Uh, this is basically health safety environment management system, uh, basically for the uh, HECS management system, I would say. And uh, this standard also carries the requirement of IVB, which is independent verification body role. And uh, uh, in all ad hoc projects, uh, this standard is getting more and more popularity and more involvement nowadays. So here is uh, basically HECS management standard. And if you see this, the first thing is how to identify HECCS at tag level point of view after the HEC IA process is completed. If you see that <clears throat> tag level point of step one is asset specific HECS uh, categories, then uh, download asset register, determine the role of the tags in major accidental hazard, validate the HECS records, then incorporate validate HECS details in the CMS, validate HECS status, then there are performance standards, mean like what is the expect expected role of any HECCS uh, uh, system or subgroup in the management of major accidental hazard, then how to assure that like uh, the HECS will play its role at the time of requirement. So it, at design stages, there is a certain verification requirement. At procurement stage, there is a certain verification requirement. At construction and installation stage, there is a certain requirement. And then finally at the uh, like sorry commissioning stage and finally then the operation phase. So then there is a verification process by IVB or I, uh, I, I would say IVP, independent verification person or independent verification body. And uh, that is also one of the role. And uh, sometimes we call it TIV, technical integrity verification process as well. And the purpose of this standard is to make sure like uh, everything is which is being done by the various stakeholders like if engineering is being done by engineering construction is procurement process construction installation commissioning and these activities are being done by the relevant departments or relevant section of the project and there is a independent verification by third party or within the company to ensure that uh, all things are done properly and there is no bypass of any system <laughs> so the purpose of the standard is to provide a standardized process of for effective management of HECS technical integrity, is stipulate the mandatory requirement to ensure that HECS are initially suitable and they are maintained in a condition so that they will continue to perform their required function throughout the asset life cycle. Now, uh, before, like, MOTI is a source to identify HECS for any major accidental hazard. But overall, like, uh, the facilities are also defined like uh, within, like I don't know, there are eight, there are major groups and 74, there are subgroups. Uh, we will uh, see them as we go next stage. Now, what is bow tie? So up to now, we were just discussing background and uh, now risk management and bow ties, the proactive risk management start with identifying hazards and analyzing their potential effects, assessing the risk against the regulatory criteria and installing control measures to reduce risk to a tolerable level. The first step in this process is to identify hazard identification done through a series of workshops with all the relevant stakeholders. When the risks are identified, it is required to communicate the identified risk, potential threats, and existing controls, and its effectiveness to the workforce. A bow tie is a diagram, <laughs> is a visual tool that communicate these identified risks effectively and efficiently we try to follow. For example, uh, risk management as per ISO 31000 and as per ISO 1776. Uh, See, step one, identify hazard, evaluate risk, identify reduction measures, then set functional requirements. There is a screening criteria also, like a low risk you can 
uh, go to HACMS and then high risk, you can go to QRA. Similarly, in ISO 31000, establish the context, like uh, what we want to do, what the criteria, then identify risk, analyze risk, evaluate risk, and then the threat uh, risk, how we manage them. So here, communicate and con uh, consult, then monitor and review the process wise. Uh, but if you see ISO 17761 is easy approach, and here some complication is demonstrated. History of Bodai. Like University of Queensland started in 1979. Piper Alpha platform oil rig disaster further like uh, help like uh, to in the RCA root cause analysis of that accident uh, identified the need of uh, Bodai and the role of HECCS and role of IBB and the role of IBP was defined. The one of the cause in Piper Alpha was like there was no third party checking about the various activities which were being done by the various stakeholders. So nowadays, if you see, uh, for example, uh, there are departments in any operating company or in I don't know, uh, there is a like operation department, process support department, uh, then there is an inst like inspection department, maintenance department. Under maintenance, there are inspection like uh, electrical instrumentation, maintenance of the rotary and static and wells, and then uh, there are project department, engineering department, but there are also integrity departments nowadays, and uh, process safety department. The, the role of these two departments is to make sure the stakeholders or the pro other departments are doing their jobs as per assigned responsibility by the management. Then Royal Dutch Shell Group adopted Votai in 1990s, supplied to other industries, including healthcare, aviation, chemical and marine, and maritime in 2000 onward. The objective of BODI, the, to improve understanding by the workforce of hazard management and thereby facilitate their effective involvement. To improve the organization and focus of supervision in order to restore an optimal balance between workforce competence and the level of supervision. A BOTI is a diagram that visualizes the risk uh, you are dealing with in just one easy to understand uh, an understandable picture the diagram is shaped like a bow tie creating a clear differentiation between proactive and reactive risk management the bow tie is a graphical display of hazards top event potential threats consequences associated barriers and how these barriers can fail due to escalation factors it gives an overview of multiple uh, plausible scenarios in a single picture. In short, it provides a simple visual explanation of risk that would be much more difficult to explain otherwise. If you see it here, for example, threat and cause one, threat cause two, then preventive barrier one, preventive barrier two, preventive barrier three, preventive barrier four. This is the left side of boat eye. And there is a top event and there is a hazard. Uh, let's say example, for example, if uh, there could be uh, hydrocarbon H2S, which may leak from any particular inventory site, the, and that may lead to, like the hazard is leakage of hydrocarbons or toxic fluid from the piping system or a process system or a pressure vessel. Top event is it may affect, it cause fire or it may kill people due to toxic element. No causes. One cause could be there could be a leakage in the flange. Other cause could be there could be a corrosion, erosion, which may cause a leak in the pipe or vessel, uh, like a wall, and that may leak. Then preventive barrier means the proper tightening, proper type of flanges, and uh, proper gaskets use and torque on the bolts. And then leak detection, uh, hydro test, and uh, leak test before start of the facilities. This could be a preventive measures. And on the other side, a proper inspection program, proper material of selection, this could be the barriers. Now on the consequent side, if you see that, like uh, there could be casualties, there could be uh, like an effect on the facility, on the asset wise, there could be effect on the environment as well. The mitigated measures uh, means like chlorine uh, inhibition, proper material of selection, and then there could be like a mitigation point of like a fire and gas detection system, fire fighting system, and emergency response system. These could be the mitigated 
barrier. And there could also be escalations and uh, they refer their role and that we'll be seeing in the uh, upcoming slide. Now, scenario specific bowtie, for example, here there is a reactor furnace and thermal oxidizer, gas accumulation inside the furnace if there is a leakage. This is the top event. What are the causes? The first cause is like incorrect design. Now, by doing so, design as per DGS, like applicable design specification or international standard. This is a barrier. Design review by licensor and EPC contractor, a company and approved by a company SMEs, this is another barrier. Then the escalation point, we will be malfunction of the BMS, the burner management system. And this one, the burner management system should be in place, then flame out and accumulation of the flammable gases, that is going to be another escalation factor. And it should be controlled by the burner management system and then inspection and maintenance of the burners should also be applied. Now, consequence point of view, if you see that, explosion resulting in fatalities and acid damage. So on the mitigation, facility response plan, then regular mock drills, so as you, people are ready to face the scenario if some unwanted scenario appears, then ineffective preparedness for the emergency handling. This could be an escalation factor. For this regular drill is an answer. So in this way, escalation one side on the mitigation side and other escalation when the burner management system does not work. So this escalation should also be taken care. So this is one example, like how a bow tie can demonstrate like what are the hazards and how those hazards are caused and what are the barriers which can prevent the cause or control the cause and the consequent side, how you can mitigate the consequences. Now, the accident, like a major accident hazard identification, how that is identified. Here, the first step in bow tie analysis identifying high risk hazard within a facility or workplace that require comprehensive analysis. A major accidental hazards are identified through hazard identification, hazard analysis, such as hazard innovate and hazard probability study. So here in a normal QRX or uh, HACIA, these are three workshops. One is hazard innovate and OIT. Uh, OIT is not referred to, OIT is for health. As it is for safety, in which is for environment. HAZOP and SIL are done through the PNIDs, which is not part of uh, basically your normal HACIA study. It is a part of uh, normal plant design. And the hazard, HAZOP is studies are done at like a design stage after operation as well, along with the SIL studies. All identified major accidental hazard must be uh, subjected to comprehensive analysis using bow ties. It is necessary that bow ties are developed for each identified major accidental hazard MAH, which are grouped with similar top event and are assets and location specific. Bow ties shall be developed in brainstorming workshops where all stakeholders from the process side, from distribution side, from process safety side would be participating. This is a sample hazard worksheet that I try to show you, which is done as a part of one of the, like for each node. And then uh, it says like, for example, hazard, where oil under high pressure on jetty offloading may uh, leak, and the threat is ship collision, the leakage of oil and under high pressure, which may cause some issue, loss of containment is the top event, ship collision, damage of loading arm due to ship collision, birth collapse, corrosion, erosion, failure to follow startup, stoppage SOPs, failure of loading arms, over pressure, extreme weather, ship drifting away from the berth. And the top event is loss of containment. Then consequence, persons may get exposed to hydrocarbon vapors, minor personal injury, environmental damage, or asset damage also there. Then there is a basically risk assessment for people, asset, environment, reputation, and then there are preventive measures, which uh, you try to list with the help of the participants. Then mitigated recovery measures, ERB by port authorities, first aid at the site. Then the residual risk also after this mitigation, it is lowered, probability would be lowered, consequence would remain same. And then if there's a recommendation, which company need to follow. So this is a one sample, like one uh, only hazard and how it is being assessed. And the same um, like, a, like a mechanism we need to show into the bow tie next stage. Like top event, 
is the top event. For example, if you go previous slide, so here top event is here, loss of containment. Then these are the threats. These are the consequences, right? These are the preventive measures. These are mitigations, right? So we are we will be just correlating all these things. Top event is in the middle. Threats are on the left side. Prevention is also on the left side, and mitigation and the consequences would be on the right side. Just to make sure, like you are able to follow it. So here, hazard top event, which was the like a loss of containment or a fire or accidental, uh, maybe a toxic impact. Hazard is something in a, a, around a, or part of the organization which has the potential to cause damage. Working with hazardous substances, working at high, other example, are the instance hazardous aspects of an organization or the process. Then idea of a hazard is to find the things that are part of your organization or process and could have a negative impact if control over that aspect is lost. Once the hazard is uh, selected or identified, the next step is to define the top event. This is the moment when control is lost over the hazard. There is no damage or negative impact yet, but it is imminent, which may occur. Now, hazard, for example, explosive material in the facility, working at height could be another scenario. Top event, explosive material is ignited. Person falls from the height and might be injured or fatality could be there. Then, threats. For example, there is a structural failure of a crane or load to a uh, heavy equipment fa falls on any other equipment. For example, structural failure of a crane, uh, the prevention would be uh, by proper design of the crane, then proper functional testing of the crane, proper inspection of the crane. And if some load too heavy for the same crane, mean uh, overload protection should be there in the crane, check save working load for the crane, then there could be some escalation factor, for example, incorrect loading or rigging then there could be a other escalation factor is strong wind, which may cause the drop object and drop object may fall on the people or the asset. So a threat is something that can start a sequence of event that if unchecked will lead to the top event. If a threat is present and there are no barriers in place to intercept it, then the top event will occur. Control of hazard will be lost and the unwanted consequence can arise. This is the basically threat and their prevention side. And this is the top event in the middle. Then consequence, consequence, uh, basically the ultimate consequence. And then there are mitigation uh, layers in between. Like a uh, consequence, if you see, PA warning, restricted access to lifting area, or a drop of object study already done, or preventive layers installed. Then use lifting plan, object drop in the sea, object impacts on the ground, and use lifting plan, isolate vulnerable equipments, and then object impacts on the live equipment as well. These could be escalation factors on the mitigation side. So here, like uh, the mitigation layers are, like, for example, when you're planning any rigging operation or lifting operation, there should be proper lifting plan, rigging plan. All the access areas should be studied. Then uh, if any potential drop is there, then barrier should be installed or the other, uh, alternative route should be used. And like one of the like escalation factor could be in the uh, barrier side, uh, untrained operator. If I go back, like there could be untrained like uh, operator which may uh, cause the problem. So we need to make sure that the operator is uh, trained, then the crane was properly functional testing and certified. And then accordingly on the mitigation side, uh, there should be warnings and uh, proper restriction like a uh, uh, lifting plan and so on. So now the sequence point of view, the bow tie consequence are risk ranked using a risk matrix to define the severity and the likelihood of the consequence identified. Now barriers. A barrier is a boat like a bow tie appear on the both side of the top event. Preventive on the threat side. For example, here if you see that like load uh, too heavy, but the overload protection in the crane. Check save working load manifest. The incorrect loading rigging. Then there's a limited st like a stability check. Limited lift stability check. Then strong winds, a weather condition should be checked before the lifting operation is conducted. Then barriers to the mitigation side, 
For example, a barrier appears on the right side of the diagram. Given that control of hazards has been lost, they are designed to try and reduce the severity or frequency of the consequences. I covered this earlier. Now, bowtie fundamentals. There are different types of barriers, which are mainly a combination of human behavior and or hardware or technology. Once the barriers are identified, you have a basic understanding of how risks are managed. You can build on the basic barrier structure further to deepen your understanding of where the uh, like strengths and weaknesses are in the system. Barrier can be classified and assessed uh, beside barrier types to include, the, include for instance barriers effectiveness. This lets you assess how well a barrier performs or is expected to perform based on available data and relying on the expert judgment as well. The resolution factors, basically uh, one is the barriers, both on the uh, consequence side and mitigation on the consequence side, uh, barriers on the prevention side, or threat side, sorry. Threat side, prevention, mitigation on the consequence side. Now, there are escalation factors, escalation factor barriers are also there. For example, escalation factor cause barrier to fail. The concept of escalation factor is designed to recognize that barriers are not 100% effective. They can be compromised by external factors. And escalation factor is therefore a condition that lead to increased risk by defeating or reducing the effectiveness of the barrier. For example, crane operator presses the wrong button. Crane operator overrides the system. The system does not allow release of the load during lifting. This is basically another uh, control, which is uh, to control the, these basically escalation factors. Then similarly, like uh, hard barriers, the integrity of heavy lift crane or mechanical handling equipment, HECS, critical equipment system, hard barrier or maintenance, uh, other regimes are also there. After that, you can look at the activities you have specified to implement and maintain your barriers. This essentially means uh, mapping uh, you save a safety management system, SMS, onto the barriers. In addition, you can determine who is responsible for a barrier and assess the criticality of a barrier in the context of all other uh, related information. These are all the things you do to increase your understanding of the barriers. Ultimately, linking and uh, visualizing all this information on a barrier gives you a holistic overview of your safety measures with relevant metadata in the context of your risk scenarios. So that is basically conclusion. Like here, after passing through uh, the normal, if I go back here, if you see this here, threat, then their preventive measures, consequence, their mitigation measures, their escalation factors, escalation factors, and their preventive measures against the escalation factor. So in this way, the vote tie is practically Prepare. My colleague would be showing you in the software side also. That is the next step. And we will have a question answer session just after this. Uh, you can write your questions. We'll be answering some of the questions as we go uh, a break after the next slide, next few slides. I will say. Then HECCS uh, barriers and performance standards. And uh, it's better to understand, like in Bowtie, uh, though HECCS are safety critical equipment and system or barriers and their performance standards are defined for each major accidental hazard. But facilities are also divided into these eight groups and 74 subgroups. I will show that. HECS, we understand uh, previous definition also. HECS we covered. Health, safety, and environmental critical equipment and system. HECS critical activities are there, then criticality. Uh, HEC critical integrity activities like activities such as design, construction, installation, commissioning, operation, modification, repair, inspection, testing, or examination associated with assuring the integrity of HECCS. These are basically, if you see the eight uh, barriers are there, these are like structural integrity, process, containment, then aggression control, detection system, protection system, then shutdown system, then emergency response plan, and life saving. These are the eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in downward, in each uh, group, there are subgroups. And then if we sum up all, 
These are 74 subgroups. And here, the concept is, this is a cheese model, like how accident can happen. For example, let's say, if structural integrity, there could be some weakness overlooked by the designer or there could be a problem in the manufacturing. Then process containment, if there could be structural weakness, but pressure containment point of view, or pressure vessel are designed, or the piping system are designed properly, they're intact. Even structural fair fluid may not come out. And third barrier is ignition control. For example, there's no ignition source nearby. Even these two barrier fails, if ignition source is not there, pollute can be escaped to the atmosphere, but without ignition. So this ignition control should be there. Third thing is fire and gas detection system. Even one, two, three barrier fails. In that scenario, fire and gas detection system should be able to detect and should be able to alert, uh, sorry, alert operators in the control room, and they should be able to take the proper uh, protective system. Then there's a protection system also there. For example, in case uh, there, there is a high pressure, like an ESD system, uh, ESD system is also there, and uh, PSVs are as a part of protection systems are there. Then shutdown system, which may take control and may shut down the facility without uh, causing the major loss for the facility. So this is the, if you see, one, two, three, four, five. If five layers fails, at least shutdown system should be activated. If shutdown system is not activated and uh, we are heading towards a disaster, that at least to save the lives, emergency response plan should be activated and it should be in place and should be working. The last thing is there should be life-saving equipment. For example, uh, there are uh, crafts and there are like uh, life rafts if on the offshore side, people should be able to take shelter in those and should be escaped from the platform. So if all these fail, then there is a major accidental scenario which would cause like a pipe alpha kind of incident where 164 people were killed in the North Sea in the 80s. So uh, then variable performance standard means like what is expected. If we see from the previous slide, from the name itself, structural integrity, what is the performance standard? Structural integrity should be ensured. What is the performance standard from a process containment? You should be able to contain the fluid within the boundary of pressure vessel or piping system. Ignition control, there should performance standard. What should be performance standard? Like there should not be any ignition source, has the radio classification properly done, should be done. The hot spots should be properly covered. So as in case there's a leakage, it, the, within the facility, ignition source, other than the heaters, fire heaters are not available. And the fire heaters are installed at a proper distance from the other equipment. Then detection system also, what is the performance standard? They should be able to detect gas, they should be able to detect heat, they should be able to detect H2S or any toxic element, and the scene should be taken by the operation team or ESD system should be taken help from the detection system, we should be able to shut down the facility. So similarly, these are the performance standards what are expected from each layer of protection or sub-layer of protection. A performance standard is a statement which can be expressed in a qualitative or quantitative term of the performance required of a system or an item of equipment and which is used as the basis for the assurance and verification of HEC system throughout the life cycle of the facility. Performance standards shall focus on identifying the minimum assurance tasks which shall be used to align the preventive maintenance routine or verification activities at project stage. In project, there's a design activity and during procurement, we need to check what activities would be, should be uh, verified, like if the vendor would be designing the equipment as per the applicable SOPs, as per the RFQ of the, vendor, uh, of the company, and then international standards would be followed and to make sure FAT would be done properly and when equipment arrives at facility, SAT is done properly and then it is installation and like a pre-commissioning and commissioning activities are completed properly. Then operational phase performance standards shall include the minimum insurance tasks which are required for the inspection, maintenance and during the operation phases of the activities. Now, what I fundamental summary we see that? Has it something with the potential of cause, uh, potential to cause harm? The top event, the way in which the control of the hazard is lost, cause is a threat. Something which could lead to the top event occurring. 
Consequences a possible outcome of the top event occurring. Barrier. Something that stops the top event happening. Preventive. Something that will avoid or limit the consequences. Mitigative. Escalation and degradation factor. Way in which barriers can, can or may fail. If you see this, like uh, these are the eight things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it gives you complete picture of the bow tie in a like a nutshell. So how to get the best out of bow tie as a like a learning or as a like why we we putting this effort a workshop. So how to get best out of bow tie? See how to like outputs lesson learned bow tie risk assessment. We explained earlier also bow tie risk assessment. Then the incident analysis. So here we see threat barrier has a top event. Then there's a barrier and consequence. And then here, when we have this analysis, something will come as a recommendation. For example, if we see a threat, if barrier is not there, recommendation would be given by the workshop. Gentlemen, you got a threat without a barrier or preventive measure. We need to have this recommendation. Similarly, consequence point of view, we have a like a very high consequence, multiple fatalities but there's no barrier to mitigate that. So there could be a recommendation and provide input to the consequence, which can be a barrier to be added. So it is not only uh, like uh, we are making it uh, for the sake of fun. Like when we are seeing the risk being shown in a, a graphical form, so we are focusing on threats or the causes and their barriers, their escalation uh, factors and barrier for the de-escalate those factors. And similarly, on the consequences, there are mitigated barriers, as well as there could be escalations. And for those escalations, we need to have a proper mitigation. And in this way, the recommendations are made as a result of Bowtie workshop and exercise. Then incident analysis as a feedback to Bowtie. For example, like if we say, like here example is given, for the sake of understanding, driver loss of attention, regular driving brakes. Number one, this is one of the mitigative layer, uh, like a mayor. Then driving a car, losing control over the car. Then external and airbag hitting a pedestrian cyclist. Then both sides, if you see that, driver loss of attention, regular driving brakes used on one incident, failed one, missing zero unreliable zero, effective zero. So some analysis like we take the data from the previous incidents. Then the external airbag like used on one incident, failed zero, missing one, unreliable one. And in this way, uh, you can do analysis by getting the information from the reliability data. Now, a simple case study of a bow tie. Uh, before we go to the case study, if we can take certain questions now. One question. What are the benefits of bow tie analysis in oil and gas facilities? See, uh, technically, oil uh, ad hoc is oil and gas facility uh, handling company, and uh, uh, it is a regulatory requirement, uh, must requirement or mandatory requirement for every project. Uh, there, is, there should be a HCIA study, and under HCIA study, uh, there is a mandatory as it workshop. As a part of hazard workshop, there's also bow tie workshop. So first thing is, it's a mandatory requirement. Number two, benefit point of view. Uh, if we see hazard uh, workshop worksheet, so there are various kind of hazards, there are threats, there are consequences, there are like a preventive measures, mitigative measures. So bow tie can show these all things in a graphical way. And if something is lacking in the graphical way, the workshop team uh, can recommend uh, those additional layers and that's the benefit for the oil and gas industry or any other uh, like a uh, process where we want to do risk assessment process. Next question. What is the difference between quantitative and qualitative risk assessment? See, qualitative is relatively judgmental and quantitative is more based on uh, use of a software or more quantitative uh, calculations are involved. How can you define what the escalation is? See, uh, we can see that escalation factor, when we were talking about one example in the crane operation, you are doing lifting operation. And uh, during that lifting operation, if 
escalation factor was uh, if the rigger or the operator of the crane lost the concentration or if he was untrained. So this could be an escalation factor. It means to, to control that escalation factor, we need to make sure before the start of lifting operations, the operator of the crane should be properly trained. He should be properly rested. He should not be drunk. Like a similar, uh, like a checklist, what you need to follow for a uh, aeroplane pilot uh, checklist, same kind of checklist should be followed for the crane operator. So the, that is the additional escalation factor. Even let's say the crane was properly functional tested, and it was almost a new crane, and the rigging plan was there, and there was nothing wrong in the lifting operation, but the escalation was made by the operator's error. So that is the role of an escalation factor. At what stage is both the analysis usually conducted? See, uh, after first hazard workshop is done, after hazard workshop, a bow tie workshop is conducted. Before QRA. Next question. If more than one escalation factor is present for a barrier, is it right to assume that the chance of failure of particular barrier is more? See, all barriers, sorry, uh, barriers are preventive measures. Escalation factors are independent and there should be subsequent barrier for each uh, basically escalation factor. And those are assessed by the team. And uh, if the, uh, there's no preventive measure available for the escalation factor, then recommendation has to be made to add the uh, preventive barrier. Next question. What's the difference between a hazard and a threat? As I see, the threats here seem to be like hazards of the hazard drop objects. The hazard and threat is same. Also, can the bow tie analysis be conducted along with the fault tree analysis as well? See, a fault tree analysis is different uh, mechanism, right? And the bow tie is a representation. Fault tree analysis is different mechanism, so both are not conducted in a similar way. Next question. How to identify threats? Use hazard, hazard or do it in both eyes separately? No, no. Uh, all the threats, which are hazards, which are identified under hazard workshop, are basically configured in both eye. The first step is hazard workshop, and then represent the same hazard uh, worksheet, if I can show you. I, I will try to show them my presentation also, like this one. This is the hazard worksheet. And this hazard worksheet, if you see the like hazard or threat. Hazard, you can see that this is hazard and threat. Hazard is oil and gas, oil under high pressure, or toxic gas under high pressure, which may leak, that is a hazard. Threat means the causes. Causes are, the various causes are there. And then top event is loss of containment or explosion or fire. Then there's a consequences. Right, then there's a risk potential, probability and consequences. Then preventive measures are there. These are the preventive measures on the cause side. And these are the consequences that mitigative measures. And then after these two, there's a reassessment of the probability and then the risk. And then there's a, if the risk is still not acceptable, there's a recommendation. So now if we see this, the same thing is shown under the bow tie. Uh, same aspects are shown in the like uh, this side hazards and their um, preventive measures, then top event, then consequence and their mitigative measures and escalation factors are also shown. This next question. Can both tie method be used for quantitative risk assessment? See, uh, quantitative risk assessment is separate detailed working, right? And uh, you need to follow a, like a software where uh, for example, we identify all the isolatable section in the PNID, identify their uh, parts count, then uh, we in calculate inventory, then likelihood consequences, congestions, uh, the effective areas, risk contours. So that is all different, like uh, uh, basically aspect of the risk. Whereas bow tie, just representation of the hazards. The bow tie is a very simple activity as in the QRA. QRA is a big activity. Hazard workshop is, let's say, done in three days. The bow tie workshop would be done in one or two days. It would be shorter. Okay. Next question. For barriers, can we say as the uh, below statement, preventive barriers will reduce overall probability of threat to happen and mitigative barriers will reduce overall consequence of event? Yes, it's true. Uh, next question. How can we identify HSC equipments and system with the help of bow tie? See, when we are identifying uh, the various, for example, hazards, so 
uh, if you see that, for example, preventive measures are coming from the structural side, corrosion side, uh, in a safe design side. When it goes to preventive, uh, like a mitigative measures, it comes from uh, fire and gas detection system, fire fighting system, ESD system. So in this way, uh, the eight layers of protections are grouped in both sides of the bow tie. Next question. During which phase of engineering this bow tie analysis will be performed post HAZOP or pre HAZOP? See, HAZOPs are done uh, on the PNIDs. And uh, once PNIDs are ready, uh, HAZOP and HAZID workshops are, could be done in parallel. Uh, bow tie is a part of HCIA study, whereas uh, HAZO and SEAL studies are part of a design uh, process. Or uh, these both like uh, studies are done at the design phase, at the operation phase, or project uh, phase, or the operation phase, uh, but both are done in parallel and uh, both are indirectly linked but not directly linked. Next question Is both an analysis for high risk? What if scenario high risk in HAZOP is 20 scenario? Should we make 20 bota analysis or have other solution? See, uh, bota is done based on the major accidental hazards. Whereas in HAZO, uh, for any scenario, any deviation uh, on an, at, at any particular node, uh, the corrective or the preventive uh, like uh, safeguards are listed and it is analyzed if they're enough to prevent the situation in case of any emergency or not, otherwise additional recommendation would be made. In both ways, recommendations are made, but uh, the scenario is different. Next question. Can you please explain the difference between bow tie and fishbone? But, uh, can you please explain the difference between bow tie and fishbone? Fishbone, I'm not aware. So maybe, I'm not sure. Bow tie, I have explained. Uh, in confined space, can we reduce the hazard less than 5%? See, this is a relative question. If the scenario is in front of you, then you can like assess and identify you know, what is the acceptable risk level and how that could be reduced depending upon available barriers. Okay, next question. Is it mandatory to do uh, MAH study for oil and gas in UAE? Please give some examples of barriers which can be both preventive and mitigating. See, we, we have given the example in the previous slide, and uh, yes, it is a mandatory requirement to have HCIA study for every project in uh, Adenov Group, and uh, that's why it is a, like a, a normal custom. And uh, as a part of HCIA, uh, has a workshop, bow tie workshop, QRA, then identification of HCCS. Uh, uh, as a coma report, these are the normal uh, regulatory deliverables uh, for every project and for every operating company of that amount. Is risk and top event same thing? Top event is a consequence. Risk is a, a multiple of the probability and the consequence. Uh, next question. In which accident investigation bow tie is recommended? See, bow tie is not part of uh, like accident investigation. It is a part of building your HCIA case. That is the practice. Okay, next question. Uh, how to identify the criticality of the barrier in bow tie? There is a risk assessment process is there. Like uh, there's a part of hazard worksheet where PUF, CUF, and risk calculation is there and I showed in the example of my slide. Okay, sir. So uh, now uh, I take for our next case study of bow tie analysis and then we will demonstrate the software that will be shown by my colleague. And uh, then at the end, uh, we'll have another question answer session. The operation carried out at the multiple product terminal and marine jetty involved receipt of ULG and gas oil from ship tanker into the storage tank uh, through jetty pipeline. The two pumps pump out supply oil from storage tanks for loading into uh, road tanker through the loading uh, base. Here, the workshop point of view, like uh, the first is the data collection, then OHID invid has it the workshop, then HCIA workshop and reports, then HSC hazard classification, non-MH assignments, as, as non-MH and significant environmental impacts, then MH and significant environmental impacts, and bow tie analysis comes for the MH on, right? Here's the bow, bow tie on the MH on. Then HSC MS for the low risk elements, and for MH, there should be HSE studies like 
और ई आई ए दैन नॉइज क्यू आर ए फेरा साइनवॉक्स मोपो ईसा ईरा एंड कोमल एब्रीवेशन ऑफ दिस वी ऑलरेडी गिवन एट वी आर सो नाउ डेमोस्ट्रेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू तो यू विल टेक द स्लाइड फ्रॉम दे ओके to start from the beginning okay so i can see yeah. okay you start mr murad will sir demonstrate hello everyone my name is murad zohar and i'm going to uh, show you the main frame of uh, botai workshop botai software we have uh, the main whenever you open the botai you will see uh, uh, the view of botai uh, software like this we have uh, the hazard here in the rect uh, rectangular shape uh, in yellow and black color in which you will write uh, your hazard hazard is the primary uh, containment which will be uh, which can be oil or gas under pressure and uh, which can cause harm when it leaks after that we have here uh, in the circular shape in red color a top event which is the leak of that hazard if we are considering oil or gas as the hazard so the leak of that hazard would be our top event which can cause severe consequence which can cause uh, uh, structural damage or uh, fatality of uh, workers working around so on the right side as uh, uh, there will be uh, consequences and on left side uh, there will be the threat of that particular top event on threat we will write uh, the causes uh which can uh, for threat uh, there are uh, uh, preventive barriers and for consequences there are mitigative barriers threat is the element that can allow top event to happen so uh, we use preventive barriers to uh, to stop that particular top event to happen and that can uh, stop uh, the severe uh, consequence to uh, cause on uh, the right side we have consequences uh, consequences and uh, there is a mitigative barrier but through which through that mitigative barrier we can uh, minimize the uh, severity of the consequences which can cause uh, uh, harm uh, to the uh, workers working around uh, i have uh, an example uh, to show you guys so you can uh, be familiar with the uh, working of this uh, botai software uh, this data has been uh, uh, extracted from the uh, hazard workshop uh, we have uh, the major accidental hazard which is oil under pressure here uh, written in uh, rectangular shape uh, hazard so oil under pressure is the hazard uh, and the leak of that hazard can cause uh, severe consequences which is leading to fire and fatalities and acid damage and environmental impact which is written on the right side in red color below this hazard there is loss of containment of oil the leak of this hazard which can cause the severe consequences or the uh, damage to the acid or uh, leading to the uh, fatalities on the left side uh, you can see there are many threats available uh, which can cause uh, the major accidental hazard to uh to uh impact or cause uh, severe consequences on the left side the first one is internal corrosion there are three uh they should be as per ad no criteria there should be minimum three barriers there in the botai software uh which cause uh which prevent uh consequence to happen or to uh in this uh internal corrosion there is material selection which is all first barrier and the second one is corrosion monitoring and the third one is maintenance and inspe uh, inspection program here you can see the plus sign uh, below this uh, barrier which is the escalation factor for maintenance and uh, inspection program this escalation factor can cause uh, this maintenance and inspection uh, barrier to fail so to prevent this uh, barrier to fail we use a delay in maintenance and inspection schedule not followed like if this uh, criteria is not being followed then uh, this uh, barrier uh, internal corrosion barrier which is maintenance and inspection program can fail so for uh, there are two uh, escalation barrier for this uh, uh, escalation which is delay in maintenance which will which we will use to prevent uh this particular barrier to fail which is aim system and deviation request 
So you will see here that uh, there will be minimum uh, three barriers for each uh, thread uh, written here. The second thread, which is external corrosion, which can uh, cause uh, oil, which is under pressure, can leak from the pipe or or through the uh, vessel which, uh, in which there, uh, it is present. For external corrosion, there is external coating and painting. Uh, painting. If external co uh, coating and painting is uh, removed or damaged uh, uh, as a part of process, then it can cause uh, the, uh, the event to happen, uh, which can cause uh, fatality or acid damage. Uh, you can see uh, here that uh, uh, on this barrier, it is written that uh, hard barrier and HSE uh, critical activity. Uh, here we are using uh, two type of uh, 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 barrier type, which is uh, hard barrier and soft barrier. We can segregate. We can uh, segregate uh, it into two parts, which is hard barrier and soft barrier. Anything we can see, uh, like uh, uh, physically, we consider it in uh, hard barrier and. Uh, the remaining uh, soft barrier we consider uh, like uh, a simple study or uh, 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 to be, uh, yeah, uh, soft barrier and ha uh, hard barrier. Here we can set uh, the barrier type. Uh, we have set only two uh, uh, barrier types here. Plus we can change the criticality of the uh, system here as well. Like we can use HSC CES equipment system. Where we can feel, uh, we can uh, see the equipment system like we have uh, CCTV here, or we have uh, the PSV here, or we are using any other uh, 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 pressure trips here. So we, we will use uh, HSE critical equipment system. Here we have given uh, here high pressure due to uh, process upset. There is a threat, uh, and for to control uh, this threat, we have the uh, preventive barrier, which is uh, pressure trips. So. Uh, the number PC07 is written here. We considered uh, this uh, pressure tips, uh, we considered uh, this barrier as a HSC critical, uh, critical equipment system, and we uh, analyzed through HSC uh, OS uh, SP29, which uh, Sir Ijaz has uh, shown you guys in, um, in the presentation. So we'll uh, use this data to check uh, which will come under or, uh, or regime, and we'll uh, use that uh, particular section to uh, prevent uh, that uh, barrier. On the right side, we have uh, uh, so on. We have uh, uh, many threats here. Uh, vehicle uh, impact can cause uh, that, and uh, that uh, oil under pressure can leak. So, for uh, vehicle impact, we have here is uh, roadway design, crash barrier, ad no work management system, qualified certified driver, a driver which is driving the car inside the uh, regime of that industry should be uh, authorized and qualified uh, to drive uh, that particular uh, vehicle inside the boundary. Uh, procedure and training, there should be a regular uh, uh, training program for the uh, freshers and uh, the person working uh, or the trained uh, people working inside the uh, uh, regime of uh, industry. Uh, IVMS uh, is uh, in vehicle monitoring system should be there uh, so that if uh, any uh, driver uh, breaks the rules, so company can uh, 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 see him. Then we have speed limit uh, within the process area. Uh, so on we have uh, uh, different threats here like uh, a drop object, uh, human errors. Here we have a threat which is earthquake and uh, there is only uh, maybe one or two uh, barriers are written here, only one barriers are written, uh, written here. There is a reason of uh, uh, this barrier uh, that there is only one barrier here as I told you earlier that there should be three minimum barriers uh, for the threat uh, to prevent uh, to prevent the event to happen. So here uh, uh, it is only one, uh, there is only one barrier because as per uh, ad hoc standard uh, for uh, uh, a natural happening, we, we can consider one or two, uh, minimum one barrier should be there to prevent that uh, 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 consequence to happen. And the last one is uh, piping vibration. Uh, for piping vi uh, vibration, let me open it. Yeah, there is a hydraulic study. So we uh, uh, take this hydraulic study as a part of soft barrier. As I told you earlier, that uh, if we see the system physically, we will count it as HSC uh, critical equipment system, otherwise, and hard barrier. Otherwise, we will take it as a, a soft barrier. And when there is a, a study or uh, uh, there is a training program, we will take it as a, a soft barrier. 
then there is a, a piping support stress analysis for the piping operation within a process envelope and these are the uh, barrier which we are using here uh, to prevent uh, uh, that uh, threat uh, to to uh, uh, to control that uh, uh, consequence to happen on the right side we have uh, uh, consequences and to prevent that uh, consequences we have a, a mitigative barrier uh, mitigative barrier will uh, uh, reduce uh, the the severity of that uh, consequences and in case of top event if the oil under pressure leaks uh, there will be a, a major uh, fatality or acid damage uh, to prevent or to reduce uh, that uh, severity level we will use this uh, mitigative barrier here we have in case of oil under pressure leak we have fng detection system we will use a uh, fire and gas detection uh, det detection system which is hsc critical equipment system for uh, FNG detection system. We will uh, uh, HSC CES. We will use this uh, uh, standard or uh, ad hoc standard uh, to check uh, which uh, a fire and gas uh, detection system should be there. Uh, we will uh, uh, use a particular uh, detection system for the uh, activity. Then we have ESD here, uh, emergency escape facilities, uh, emergency communication system here, escape lightning. We have given uh, every uh, uh, barrier a specific number and uh, HSC critical equipment system as per ad hoc standard. Uh, furthermore, we have uh, a passive fire protection, active fire protection, spill containment and drainage system. Spill containment and drain, uh, drainage system should be there in case of oil. When we, uh, but when we discuss about uh, gases or uh, the particular gas, we will uh, eradicate this uh, barrier from here. Then we have hazardous area classification, separation distance, and then ERP. We have ERP uh, emergency re response plan, and we have escalation factor here as well. Uh, uh, the escalation factor here is known updated ERP that this barrier can uh, fail if uh, the ERP is not updated. If we are making change in, uh, changes in the plant or uh, if uh, there is any modification in the plant and uh, the ERP is not updated for uh, that particular modification or uh, uh, renovation, then, uh, then, the, then it may lead to the uh, severe uh, consequences. To prevent that uh, uh, escalation barrier, we have uh, uh, the escalation barrier here, which is uh, uh, routine mock drills, trained and competent crew, mutual aids with nearby ad hoc GC. Uh, like if uh, if the workers are working in, uh, uh, there are four sections of plant, A, B, C, and D. And if uh, section A of the plant uh, catches fire, then there is, it is the responsibility of, uh, of the remaining sections uh, to provide their uh, firefighting equipments and uh, fire tenders there so they can control uh, the happening of that uh, uh, severe consequence. Uh, then we have here is uh, updatation of uh, ERP for any changes hazard at site. So if there, uh, there is any uh, change in hazard at site, then the ERP should be updated as per the standard uh, of the industry. So uh, likewise, uh, I have made uh, this uh, what I uh, Bow ties uh, for the different hazard which was uh, identified during the uh, hazard workshop. This particular, we will uh, make one bow tie for a one a major accidental hazard. This bow tie was only for uh, the oil under pressure. Likewise, uh, I have made uh, for LPGs, uh, sore condensate, NGL, hydrocarbon gas, and uh, hydrocarbon, then hydrogen gas, uh, all. Uh, major accidental hazards which were identified during the hazard workshop should be uh, uh, analyzed on the boat uh, eye software separately. Okay. Right. So uh, that was a demonstration by my colleague. And uh, now if there could be uh, further questions we can answer or we can conclude the session. One question. How, we, how do we define HSE criticality or barrier? Or barrier? See, uh, as we said earlier, let me go back to my slide again. Okay. If you see this screen, right, 
here anything which is coming under high risk is a, these all are yellow but here if 4d comes or 4e comes that will become as a high risk so here demonstration point of view is already on the like your risk is medium but if this is a high risk that is the platform which defines major accidental hazard so we define severity we define probability and then we calculate the risk ranking for people for asset for environment and reputation and this is the platform to identify like which is a major accidental hazard which is causing more or one or more fatality as per the applicable risk matrix of adno okay uh, next question for determining the numbers of numbers of barriers for each threats is it a pre-programmed barrier suggestion in the software or is it purely brainstorming process by the participants of the bow tying workshop? It's a mainly brainstorming session. Okay, next, one, next question. Which one is the strongest barrier? AGC critical equipment or equipment or system is the strongest? See, uh, barriers, if you see any hazard, so there are different scenarios and the different uh, barriers are there. When we take uh, working at height or lifting operation, there are different kinds of barriers, both on the prevention and mitigation. But uh, when we talk about a reactor operation, so it will have a different uh, preventive and mitigative uh, barriers. So the mechanism is whatever the kind of hazard is, how those uh, basically the likelihood and probability related factors are being managed in the hazard worksheet. We should be able to demonstrate same in the bow tie uh, worksheet and diagram. And in that process, if we find something is missing, so this would be add on recommendation to the hazard worksheet or hazard workshop recommendation. Is a normal concept. Okay, next question. Is there any specific reason on why threat and consequence shown in such direct in direction? Threat on left side and consequence on the right side of the bow tie. See, in the normal sequence point of view, like a cause are always discussed first, then uh, there are mitigative, uh, there are preventive measures, and then middle is the top event, and then top event co consequences, like, like if the top event occurs, what would be the consequence? In the normal flow, in English writing, you move from left to right. The same, same concept is being used here. Next question. What is the difference between hard and soft barriers? See, as my colleague previously explained, hard barrier is with the physical presence of the barrier, like uh, any equipment, any instrument system, any logic solver or final elements, all those are part of the hard uh, basically uh, system. Soft is the studies or procedures. Procedures normally called soft uh, barriers. Next question. Is, isn't human error too vast to identify as a threat? Does it, it trickle back to competency of the person? Like uh, if you remember my previous example, like uh, if the lifting operation or if a plant is working, right? The plant was designed properly as per the standard. It was built properly. It was uh, commissioned properly, but if the one operator is untrained, right, he may screw up the plant, whole plant. It means the human competence is very, very important factor. And uh, for that reason, if uh, to manage human error areas, this should be building uh, safety features in the system. Next question. Do you consider potential production loss as part of asset loss in risk ranking assumption? Yes, if you can see that we have asset or a production. Under asset, you can cover production or asset damage cost both. What is the frequency of conducting HSEA, HSEIA and bow tie? Is there any specific standards when to conduct and the frequency? Basically, in Adenoc, uh, like uh, it is mandatory to have HSCIA along with hazard and water workshop at the inception of every new project at feed stage and both at uh, TPC stage. Whereas after the assets are in operation, there's a normal frequency is five years. It can go sometimes five to 10 years. Okay, last question. At what preventive or mit uh, mitigative barrier does the escalation or degradation factor applies? Does this factor apply in each barrier? See, we have to see if there is any escalation factor applicable. It is not necessary like escalation factor would be applicable on each barrier. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it was a more interactive session, and uh, we look forward to meeting you 
to the new session soon uh, as per our plan. And uh, previously, we were conducting uh, our webinar every two weeks. Now, this schedule has been changed to four weeks. So now, uh, we will be conducting next webinar after four weeks from now. Thank you very much.